Seventy years ago from today, a Taiwanese widow stood up against government officers when they confiscated her black market cigarettes. A public dispute ensued and a bystander was shot and killed. This event led to an open rebellion and marked the beginning of the White Terror, a period of martial law in which tens and thousands of people disappeared, died, or were imprisoned. The February 28 incident is one of the most important events in Taiwanese history, but at the same time, it's not one that's commonly known or spoken about. It is an important event because it shapes Taiwan to become what it is today, setting forth its path of self-determination and becoming one of the most progressive places in Asia. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me tonight allowing me to participate in this event. I am honored to be here and to share with you my experiences on discovering Urupa and how I feel it connects me with the people of Taiwan. Now, Taiwan has always been special to me because it is a place full of history, culture, and conflict. I was born and raised here in Southern California, but during my childhood, I was gifted with my first trip to Taiwan one summer when I was four years old. Here we are standing in front of our old house in Taizong. In fact, most of my earliest memories are from that summer I spent in my grandparents' home. The Taiwanese sitcoms we would watch, the walks we would take, and the bananas my akong would have every morning, and who could forget the home-cooked meals my ama would provide. After that summer, I came back to the States. I continued with my schooling. I grew up, and I didn't return to Taiwan for almost 15 years. But throughout those years, I was so lucky to have grandparents who would call, who would visit, and they would ask me, which translates to, when are you coming home? Home. They used that term for me, not recklessly, but generously, because home really is where you are surrounded by the people you love and the people who make you who you are. So before I started college, I prepared for my long-awaited homecoming to Taiwan. I studied everything on where to go, where to eat, and of course, what to see. I did what everyone did during that time. I researched with the internet. And with my limited knowledge of modern Taiwan, I found pictures of towering skyscrapers, taxi cabs at the snap of your finger, and night markets galore. I reminded myself to eat taiyang bing, bao wan, and oyster pancake. But among the places the internet suggested I visit included Taipei 101, and of course, Erba Peace Park. But none of these pictures would pr really prepare me for what I was to discover. So there I was again, back at my grandparents' home. I shared with them this bucket list of all the places I wanted to go. And I remember the day we got on the bus at Taizong bus station and headed north to the capital so that I could see the city for the first time. One of the things I really love about Taipei is how often you can be surprised by something just under your nose. This robust city is full of hidden gems that people don't know about, and some even within plain sight, as public as the Urba Park. Urba Park, as we know it today, is actually quite symbolic of Taiwan's complicated history, because it didn't really begin as a park. In fact, over the years, this area has transformed in identity from being a ground place of territorial disputes, an area of political uprising, an epicenter of gay culture in Taiwan, and now serves as a symbol of peace, as a memorial to the Urba incidents. Within the park itself, you can find symbolism at every corner. Taking a look at the location, Urba lies on top of what used to be Tianhou Miao, a temple dedicated to Matsu, goddess of the sea. 
And during that time, this temple served as a neutral ground, a meeting place for the people of Old Taipei to come and talk about local politics. When the Japanese colonial period arrived, they tore down this temple and established it as Taihoku New Park. Not a Japanese style park. It was the first European style urban park in Taiwan and one of the first in Asia. On this park, the Japanese authorities built a radio station which would become the central broadcasting activity for the island. This is a photo taken from inside the station and you can see the stained glass ceiling, very representative of European style architecture that was popular at the time. In 1945, the park was renamed Taipei New Park by the Kuomintang and that station became the primary broadcasting station of the Kuomintang government and military. Now, how is this relevant to the Urba incidents? It was that year in 1947 when protesters furious over the police brutality took over that radio station and used it to broadcast to the rest of the island about the wrongdoings of the government. This really set forth the Taiwan independence movement. And following these events, a period of martial law lasted for more than 38 years, which historians refer to as one of the longest imposition of martial law by regime anywhere in the world. In 1996, as we enter Taiwan's modern democracy period and prepare ourselves for the healing period, President Li Danghui made the first official apology as a leading government official. For the first time, the Urba incident was officially acknowledged and its significance openly discussed. He designated the former radio station as a historical site. The building was made the home of the Urba Taipei Memorial Museum and the park was rededicated as Urba Peace Park. To me, this story represents the extremely complicated relationship that Taiwan has with the surrounding countries, the internal struggles of its citizens, and symbolizes the hard-earned peace for the people of Taiwan. A multi-layered cultural tapestry with history and influences, one that is so special and one you can only find in Taiwan. My grandparents, those wonderful people, in an effort to educate and to nourish me, they brought me to this park and they brought me to this museum. At the completion of this trip, I realized that I myself contain multiple layers. I have influences from my Taiwanese upbringing that first summer in Taiwan, and I have influences from being raised here in the States. My identity itself is many things, I am Taiwanese and I am American. Taiwan is surprisingly full of history and secrets that hide in plain sight, and Urba Park is a wonderful example of that. Similarly, I feel that every one of us can relate that way. As we get to know each other here, we can discover that so much shapes us to become who we are. I hope that we can reflect and talk about these events in history in order to transform tragedy into a, for, into a force for progress so that Taiwan society can rebuild itself into a strong community built on peace and respect. If you ever find yourself visiting Taipei in the future, please stop by and take a look at the park and remember the lessons that history give us to achieve the brighter future. Thank you.